Hello, I am visiting Mel for her old lady birthday. I just have to keep saying that because it's not nice. <laughs> I never claim to be nice. Just um, wait, you're just coming. <laughs> yeah, in a couple years. <laughs> comes faster than you think, trust me. <laughs> so we are at Barnes and Noble and I have been trying to read out of my comfort zone recently and somebody over here reads a lot of books that I do not. So I'm going to give her five things that I'm interested in reading and she can pick any book that has those things. She's gonna pick three, so some of these won't be included. I haven't even thought about what I'm gonna give her because I wanted I'm terrified. it to be um, kind of on the spot. So, I mean, it can be horror and thriller, which I usually read, but it can also be anything else. So, I'm also terrified because then I'm going to read this book. It will be in this video. No pressure? No pressure. Oh no. Do I get like demerits if you don't like it? Yes. Okay. I will never come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, the first thing that I tend to really like, I want to like see your reaction. Oh no. This one's not bad. I've already put, uh, bunny ears on you so <laughs> cool <laughs> um the first one is isolation which i feel like is okay. pretty easy across genres that's okay i'll see it, it doesn't have it. to be like i'll a see it when i see it true yeah um another one hmm that's the beauty in this is like i can look at things i'm not having to like cold call think of things yes so. yeah you get to browse yeah another thing that i like which this one might be difficult I like very sarcastic characters. I can work with that. Yeah. That's not the one that I was thinking that was going to be difficult. Oh, okay. So there's two. You I'm do scared think of what carefully. you could give me. You got like three more things. I know. I'm going to be so vague with this one. And I just like, uh, like science-y things. So okay. it doesn't have to be sci-fi. Okay. But like science-y. But yeah. I already have a book. I'm scared. Like I literally have a book. Oh. <laughs> And it's one I know you said you will read. Okay, so that's three. <laughs> and then also, I'll just be very basic for myself. Any sort of game. Okay. Um, like competition or game? Either one, okay. I think, is fine. And the last thing, I'm just going to go with anything that's, like, super dark. I mean, okay. I, I tend to read dark things in general. So what's going to happen is Mel's going to pick three books that have, like, all of the books don't have to have all of these things. Some of these could be left out. And then I'm going to pick one out of the three she picks to actually get and read. So we're going to go into Barnes & Noble. I am not going to, like, stand right beside her and watch everything because <laughs> I want to be surprised when I see the picks. So I'm going to just creep on Mel in Barnes & Noble, which will be very fun. So I was log. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, okay. There's this little patch. Oh, my God. <laughs> if I go down... Please don't laugh at me. Call the ear. <laughs> <laughs> this is complete ice. Cool. I want to see where Mel is. Oh, I found her. What is she getting? I'm scared. Okay, but like, what if I gave Lexi? Okay, but like, hear me out. What if we gave Lexi the fifth season? Because I can't remember, but I think it has some sciencey things. Definitely a little bit of isolated, definitely dark. I don't know, we're gonna think about it. Guys, we have a problem. There are a lot of books that I actually could give Lexi, and I thought I was gonna not be able to find very many, but I have like one, two, three, four, five, six that I could give her that like fit the vibes. And now I think I have to narrow because I think she told me I could only do three, but I've texted her to confirm because like there's so many I could pick. I said three. How many have there? Oh, seven. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay, Mel has picked her five books. Sorry. <laughs> well, well, I had seven. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to pick between five instead of three now. 
I, but initially I did say three so that it was easier because we didn't know what was going to be in stock here and stuff. So five is fine. Okay. <laughs> what is first? Okay. I don't know what to start with. I feel like I'm going to start with an easy one. So one of them I knew she was already planning to read, so I put it back. And then this one I know you've been recommended before. Um, and that's Gideon the Night. Oh. So this oh. one fits, um, let me pull up my notes. It fits several different elements. It fits a sarcastic main character, 150%. Mm. Gideon is about as sarcastic as it gets. Definitely isolated. Mm. Actually, this hits all five. It's oh. sciencey. It does have a mystery. It may not be like a true game, but there mm -hmm. are like trials kind of to it. Okay. And then it's definitely dark. Um, I want to retry this one because I didn't mm -hmm. only give it a three star when I first read it, which was a while back. Mm -hmm. But there were things in it then that I don't think will bother me as much now. Like it's okay. a fantasy world, but it, she talks about like pizza and stuff. So oh, I don't know okay. if that would bug you. No, I like pizza. Um, but like a fantasy world sometimes, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's necromancers in space is how it's always like presented, okay. but I don't feel like that is a great expectation. It's more of like a mystery in a way. Interesting. So okay. anyway, this is, this is the first That one is a very, a very good choice. Yeah. Um, then we're going to go with an off the wall one since that one was easy. Little school with an off the wall one. I was scared. Oh, here's <laughs> the thing. I have actually DNF'd that book. Oh, have you? I did not know that. Yes. Okay, it was like sense. two years ago. I, I am had, not surprised. I had not read like any sort of fantasy at that point, besides like as a child. And I was like, oh, you know, everyone likes this one. I'm too dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I was too dumb too. Yeah. Um, but it does hit the science a little bit. Mm -hmm. I definitely think like parts of it are for sure isolated. There is a sarcastic character, but he's like later, mm -hmm. so I don't know if that will count right off the bat. It's definitely dark. There's not really a game element to it, though. So okay. this is like a few things, mm -hmm. but this was definitely a more, I'm not sure, because this is like fantasy. Yeah. Fantasy. I, but it's also slightly dystopian. Uh, yes, so. that's why I tried it initially. Yeah. But I can okay. see you not liking that one. Um, I think that's one that m I probably will not pick right now. That's fair. <laughs> but I think the more that I read in the genre, I might try it again, but right now, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's fair. Um, the other one I'm not as sure about is okay. Blood, uh, The Blood Trials by Annie Davenport. I don't think I know that one. So this one is one that I read and was surprised by. It's like, I would say new adult sci fantasy. So it's definitely okay. sci-fi with fantasy elements. Okay. Um, it is good. I don't think it's as strong of a book as some of these, but I still think it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. It's got trials. It gives me Hunger Games vibes. Um, I can't remember if the main character is sarcastic, but I think one of her friends is. Mm. It's definitely like blow people up, so it has dark themes. There is like a competition trials element to it for sure. It's mm. set in like a space, but it's like a fantasy space. And it is slightly like the first half is more of that. When you get into the second half, it goes a little bit more political because mm -hmm. the whole point is her grandfather, she thinks, was murdered and everybody else tells her that he died of natural causes. Okay. So she joins like the Marines to try to like mm -hmm. investigate that. Interesting. So I enjoy Like this is more like of a popcorn fantasy sci-fi. It's fun. I don't think it's overly hard to get into. Mm -hmm. Deb really liked it too. Which is always a good sign. So, there's that. Mm. And it's diverse. So, even better. Mm. And then, one of the other ones that I was thinking could be Deadly Education. Mm. Okay. Naomi Novik. This one, the only thing I wasn't sure about is it has a very um, stream of conscious writing style. Which mm. I'm not sure if you would like. But the main character, super sarcastic. She doesn't get any more sarcastic. It's isolated to a school. They are there. Mm. They cannot leave. If they try to leave, they're going to get eaten. That's like the whole point is there's these monsters oh. in the school and they are basically put in there to see if they can survive in the real world. Mm. And these monsters feed off of magic. So graduation is literally them battling the big boss to get out Interesting. of the school. Um, it does have some darker themes. I would say like if you consider the school and like them going through trying to beat these monsters, there are competition elements mm -hmm. to it, but not as much so as some of the other ones. So okay. I think this one could work. And... I get it's not really super sciencey, but you could argue some of the things are sciencey. Mm -hmm. And the last one is vicious, uh, which was an easy one. I think Lexi will probably like this one. Um, this is a like definitely 
sarcastic main character. <laughs> it's about two guys that are in college that realize that if you get to the very edge of death and die and get brought back, you can have superpowers. So it's like a super villain story mm -hmm. and they eventually like you have that in the present and then you go to the future and they despise each other and they're like battling against one another interesting um, so it doesn't have an isolated setting but has most of the other stuff so hmm. um let me flip them right side up these are lexi's five choices <laughs> hopefully she thinks i did okay like i knew this one was a wild card yeah but like the thing is I just had to toss it in there. if i hadn't already tried it i would be very interested the in the fact that, that you've already tried it means that i did something right <laughs> yeah so, yes i'm just saying <laughs> anyway these are the five let's see i don't know what lexi's gonna pick but i don't know either those are your choices the other two, if you just want to know, were Ocean at the End of the Lane, which felt too easy by Neil Gaiman, and Ashes of the Sun by Django Wexler, which I know for a fact she was already planning to read, which also felt too easy. Yes. Okay. I think these are my top three choices. Oh. Okay. That was not what I was thinking you would go with. What did you think I would get? Vicious? I figured you would get vicious. The thing is, I've DNF'd a book from her very different i don't like I, yes. the other series yeah but still that's fair i <laughs> honestly think i might go with this one that is like one of the ones i almost took out because i had already heard of these other two yeah so i feel like it's fun to read a book i've never heard of it is a little like it's not ya it's shelved in adult mm -hmm. but they do lean a little like they're a little more angsty kind of YA. which is fine okay. that doesn't my issues with ya are like i would class like, it as older ya mm -hmm. not adult but i feel like there's a lot of adult that i would class that way yeah my issues with ya are generally like i don't like like high typical high school yeah drama <laughs> you really did sell me on this one as well cassidy loves that one i don't but i mm. it was the stream of conscious that didn't get me but she has given every single one of those books five stars and I've given them like three stars, but the concept is incredible. I will give it that. Oh my gosh, what do I do? And if you I, decide to get that, I'm gonna buddy read it with you because I want to read it again. I do want to read this one, but- I read it like four years ago and I think that my taste has changed enough that I can appreciate it more now. I think that this one is one that I'm more likely to read outside of this. Okay. So I don't think I'm gonna get this one, but I'm, I am super interested okay. in it. So that was a good- I feel like I did pretty well. I'm I'm very <laughs> I'm very impressed. Mm. It's way easier with things staring at you that you can just grab. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I'm gonna do this one because I've never heard of it before. I know you'll like the beginning. It does change its tone a little mm -hmm. halfway, so just be prepared for that. It goes a little more political. But I still liked it. Which I think if I like the characters, that won't bother me. Okay. I still liked it. Okay, I'm gonna go with this one. While I am at Mel's house, I decided to read the first chapter of this. I'm leaving later today, which is sad. She <laughs> wants to hear me talk. Of course. <laughs> um, so I got through 27 pages and I think it is interesting, but it's one of those books that I just need more things to happen to become fully invested. I do like our main character. Immediately she's starting fights, which I approve of. And then we start to learn about kind of what is causing her to have these very big emotions. Her grandfather, who was, I think, in charge of the country, town, something that they live in. He died like three months ago and she's handling it very poorly. And there's this like graduation ceremony thing happening the next day and she decides that she's gonna take a year off and she ends up going back to where she used to live with her grandfather and then there's this guy there that starts like telling her some information which causes her to not take this year off. So we find out that her grandfather's like confidant believes that her grandfather was actually murdered. So she decides to not take the gap year because she wants to start investigating that. And it has something to do with the bar fight. Well, not something, some of the people they were involved so that is what happens in the first chapter and it is interesting and there's like talk of these trials that are happening i guess to let her like officially be part of this i don't know fantasy words well i mean it's just made up for this book but um 
to be part of this like ranking thing. I'm really bad at talking about stuff like this, but so far, so good. I'm flying home today, so I'm not gonna read any more of this, but I am excited to continue reading this, which is good. I know Mel asked me earlier if I was hating it or if we could stay friends. So for now, we can stay friends. I have made it 170 pages into the blood trials. I just got to chapter 11 and I am enjoying this so far. I'm really liking the storyline. I feel like the pacing is working for me. There's constantly been things happening, but we're also learning about things that are happening in this world, both in the past to get it to where it is and the present. She has been investigating the death of her grandfather this whole time. She's learned some interesting things that are making her question things she thought she has always known. She's been doing some like pretty in-depth investigating and also is competing in these trials to get this rank that she needs to to be able to follow in her grandfather's footsteps and also investigate his death. My one complaint about this is I guess the writing style. It feels very young to me. I don't think this is YA. We are following younger characters but I think it just feels a little bit too young and I can't really put my finger on the specifics of why that is. I think it's just like the way the characters are talking to each other. There's just like certain phrasing that feels very young to me. This came out in 2022 so it could be that like she's trying to use more current sayings but I don't I don't know that's really my only complaint but I also don't have a lot of strong feelings towards it I think at this moment it's feeling like three and a half stars it is keeping my attention the entire time and I do want to know what's happening but like I don't desperately need to know you know it is feeling a little long this is like 450 pages but the audiobook is like 18 hours long also look at this bookmark this is the team at shadows bookmark for realmathon which i am co-hosting it is hosted by cassidy from cards with cassidy i'm really excited to be co-hosting again so make sure you join the shadow team to be on my team and i'm really excited to be able to co-host with mel who gave me this book to read so yeah the announcement video is in the description but like this bookmark is incredible let me know if you're participating and if you are joining my team it is the best team anyway <laughs> i'm going to get back to reading because i do want to know what's going on i like the trials aspects they do know that these things are going to be happening when they pledge this rank I don't but they don't know what the things are going to be so that has been fun to find them out the things that have happened so far haven't been anything like groundbreaking but i'm having a good time i'm 306 i couldn't tell if it was a six or an eight anyway i'm 306 pages into the blood trials since i have this open the realmathon announcement has gone live and these are no longer available they sold out like within a few hours. Cassidy is trying to get more, possibly, maybe. So I'm not sure if these are available anymore, but I'd love for you to participate in the Rebathon and join Team Shadows. And I think you can like favorite her Etsy shop in case more are added. So the book. I am enjoying this, but it's definitely not a favorite for me. I think at this point it's going to be either three or three and a half stars, depending on how the rest of this goes. But I do know that the last third of this tends to be people's least favorites. A lot of people say that it feels like it should be in the second book and that it's a big shift and like it just feels like a different book in the last third. So while I am entertained by this story, I am having a few issues, I guess. I don't feel invested in anything. There's been some like big moments that I think are supposed to emotionally impact you and I just don't really care. And another one of my issues is that this is apparently like a huge class. Like there starts off with like 600 people and then at one point they're doing this thing there's 300 people but there's only like seven people mentioned total and I literally always forget that there's tons of people doing these things. I just feel like it's not mentioned enough and like not enough people are mentioned. The thing is like obviously I don't want 300 perspectives and I don't want 300 people named but I think there needs to be more things that show that there's more than just these few characters that are getting mentioned all the time. I truly forgot that there were this many people and it was mentioned I was like oh I thought there were 10 people. So that throws me off every time something like that comes up. And I just think there's something about the writing that feels very young for me. I have looked at a few reviews and a lot of people talk about how dark this is, but it doesn't feel any more dark to me than something like The Hunger Games. 
I also do read horror and thriller primarily so like maybe I'm just desensitized to things like this but it doesn't feel like it's too dark or disturbing or gory or anything. I mean there are dark and gory things happening but it's not really impacting me in the way that it might impact other people. Once again maybe I'm just not okay and that's fine. <laughs> But I think I just want something more from it. Don't know what that is. I am enjoying it, but it's not a favorite. I definitely think I'm at the point where the first part really wraps up and then we're moving into the other things that are going to happen and lead into the second book. So I don't know if I'm excited to continue. I am liking the like murder mystery plot that is in here as well with her grandfather. I like having that as something that is moving the plot forward as well on top of these trials. I'm glad I'm reading something out of my comfort zone. I just wish it was going a little bit better even though I am still enjoying my time. I have finished the blood trials and there definitely is that switch in like really everything that happens towards the last third of the book. But here's the thing. Did I like it? I think so. So we see the end of the trials and then it switches to the aftermath of things and it definitely gets more into the politics. And I thought that stuff was pretty interesting. Not like to the point where I need to go read it immediately, but I'm kind of between three and a half and four stars. Honestly, more of my issues came from the front half of this book. I really feel like the writing bothered me. It felt very YA. There's a lot of discussion about this one being YA or not. I think the original intention was this for not to be YA, but it definitely does feel that way, especially because of the writing. The age of the characters is like in between YA and like, I guess the new adult time frame, but the writing made it feel YA to me. Um, it felt like the author was trying to like put in as many phrases to show that it was a younger character, which like I can appreciate to a certain extent because I've read other books that the character was supposed to be young but felt like an old man. But this one just like went too far in the wrong direction. And then like there are supposed to be hundreds of people participating in these trials. I kept forgetting that that was a thing. There were the same few people mentioned the whole time. And then things would happen and they'd be like, oh yeah, the other 300 people. And I'm like, who? So I just forgot that um, tons and tons of people exist. And I understand that like we cannot get perspectives of or conversations with or like really anything about all of that. But just like the scale of it felt so small for it being so many people. Um, and I just think that there was a better way to do that to make it feel more high stakes, I think, because... Whenever you're like, oh yeah, there's just these like small group of people doing this thing, like, yeah, I guess it's high stakes and whatever, but it feels different when it is a small group of people versus like, I think there were 600 people at one point. I think I am going to settle on three and a half stars. I think the writing is what's keeping it from being a four star. And like, in theory, I'm interested in the second book. This is a duology. So like reading one more is really not that bad, but I've heard a lot of people don't like the next one. So we'll see. Maybe eventually I will get to it, but it's not a top priority for me. But thank you so much to Mel for picking this for me. I would have never, ever, ever picked this up. The trick for anybody to recommend me books. Tell me it has elements like The Hunger Games. Speaking of The Hunger Games, I'm doing a Patreon read-along for The Hunger Games, and I cannot wait for it. I've reread The Hunger Games and Catching Fire, but not Mockingjay, and then I've only read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes when it came out. So I think it's going to be a very interesting experience and I'm excited for that. But I'm glad Mel picked this for me. I know she was not expecting me to pick this one from the stack that she picked at the bookstore. But I wanted to try something out of my comfort zone. It generally went well and I'm glad that I did it. Mel and I also did a collab video. I forced her to unhaul some books and threatened her with a spray bottle so make sure you check that out if you made it to the end and want to leave me an emoji to say you were here you could leave me some sort of like planet and i will see you soon bye